Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can install your operating system using Chrome OS for your Raspberry Pi. And um, this is using Chrome OS, which as you know, Chrome OS cannot run Windows or Mac OS apps. It can run Linux apps, but when I use the Linux apps like our Raspberry Pi Imager and I it doesn't detect my SD card at all so that was my first idea that I could use that to flash your image but that doesn't work and then I I also tried the Android version of flashing it and the Android version does not work either and then when you look this up on the internet it says to use this tool called recovery which you can install on Chrome OS like a web app and it says use local image and I downloaded Raspberry Pi OS and then I did this thing but it every time I try it it gives an error which is really bad I mean annoying and because that would not work I had to go with noobs so if you don't know what noobs is it's this thing where you just copy the files over to your SD card and then you just install your Ras your OS from the web so you'll understand what it is in a minute so you just have to type download noobs so this one is larger because you can install your operating system without a network but just to be faster, I'm going to do network install only. But if you do not have an internet connection, you should go with this one. But if you do, this one is just quicker in my opinion. So you just download the zip. And just save it wherever you want. And I do want to say this is just a normal Chromebook that does not have that much storage on it. So it's just downloading now. So it is done downloading now. So we just open up our files. And then we go to downloads. And here we have this. So we can just. We can open it with the zip archiever. That was the wrong thing. So what you need to do is you. On the noobs light zip. Just click on it. And it'll open up this app for you. And it will say extract zip file. So just go extract. And it, it's now going to start extracting the um, noobs for us. So when you're done extracting it, go into the folder where you extracted it to. And what you're going to do is... Well, actually, before you do that, if you if you have anything on your SD card, you need to format it. So my this is my SD card. I just plugged it into my Chromebook, and right click right here, and go to go down to Format Device, and it has to be FAT32. This will not work if it is not FAT32. So erase and format. And right now, as you see, it says formatted. So we're good now. So go back to the folder where you extracted noobs to. Go Control A. And then pull all of these and copy it to untitled. Or I mean, whatever your SD card is called. And it's copying all of the items right now. Okay, so it's done copying now. It, they're not that big, so it just takes a few seconds. And now what you can do is just take out your SD card from your Chromebook, plug it into your Pi, and boot it up. Okay, so I booted my Raspberry Pi up with noobs after I did it on the Chromebook, and I get this screen. So... What we can do here, we can install Raspberry Pi OS full with all these desktop and applications, but that takes up more space. So if you don't want that, you can just install the desktop environment with no recommended apps, which is the one that I'm going to use. And then there's also, this one does not have a desktop environment, it's just like the terminal. So you can also use that if you're just going to be using like as a server or something. And then Libra Elect is Kodi. So you can use that too, or Laka is for emulation. But so another cool thing that you can do with noobs is multi-boot. So if you want two operating systems on the same SD card, I can click on Raspberry Pi OS, 
click on Laka, and then when I boot up my Pi, I'll be able to choose if I want Raspberry Pi OS or Laka. But that's not what this video is about, so I'm not going to do that. So I'll just, I'm going to be installing the classic Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. So you give that little tick right there, and you go install. And it says it will, everything on your SD card will be erased, and you know that, so you click yes. And it says the install is going to begin. So it just downloads Raspberry Pi OS for you and installs it. So this could, the time of this could change according to your internet speed. So yeah, you just have to wait for that to be done. So it says OS is installed successfully. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click OK. And it's doing a reboot. And it should boot into the place where we can boot up our Raspberry Pi OS. See, because we only have one OS, when you reboot, it boots straight into Raspberry Pi OS for us. And here we are. We are in the desktop. So we can go next, and you can, I want United States, use US language, US keyboard, next. So this is just going to set the location up for me. And the password, you can change it if you like. Next, you can set up Wi-Fi if you like. And you can update to if you like. I don't want to. So yeah, this is Raspberry Pi OS installed with noobs. So now I think I'm just going to go over some useful apps that I you install my Raspberry Pi OS so you guys could install too and you guys so I'm just like gonna show you guys some useful apps that you want you would want to install in your Raspberry Pi OS or a different software if you don't know much about this and you want to learn this could be helpful for you so if you right click and go to desktop preferences and go down you can always change your background image to whatever you can just test out these to see different ones so Canyon that's Canyon and then we have clouds which kind of looks cool in my opinion so i'll start out with some of the simple apps so first of all nail fetch is an app that tells you information about your system and stuff and it's very useful in my opinion so i always install that so just you type that command it will be in the description too to copy over hit y when you're prompted And it just installs it for you. And now I'll show you how you can run it when it's done. So it's done. So you can go nail, fetch, hit enter. And we have this nice Raspberry Pi logo here. And we have what operating system it is, what model of Raspberry Pi, what if it's LXD or XFCE or whatever it tells you from here. So this is really useful. And then the second one, Gparted. With Gparted, you can uh, edit your partitions, format USB drives, or shrink, or make partitions bigger if you need to do that for an operating system. And I use this a lot because the Raspberry Pi is one of my main Linux computers. That's why. So if we go here, System Tools, Gparted, and type in your password. If you changed it. Type in that. If you didn't, it's Raspberry. And Gparted opens up for us like this. And from here, you can edit all of your partitions and do all of that stuff. I have more partitions because I installed this with noobs. But if you just flashed it from your computer, you wouldn't have all these partitions. And then the second one, or the third one, Raspberry Pi Imager. So this is important if you're in, if you're installing this from a Chromebook. You, you can't always use noobs because noobs does not have all of the operating systems. It only has a few. So if you want to install Android for say on your Raspberry Pi, you can use Raspberry Pi Imager and flash it to another SD card. And you can use your Raspberry Pi as your main computer basically. So after you did that, open up Imager. And here we are, we have Raspberry Pi Imager on our Raspberry Pi. So you can choose OS, you can choose one of these OS's. Or you can use the custom image, like if you want Manjaro, Manjaro is not included in here. So you go over to the Manjaro website, download it, and use that. I don't have it now, obviously. 
and then you choose your SD card which will be on with a USB adapter into your Pi so that's really good too and you you can use Firefox if you want a different browser you can just use Firefox instead of Chromium I mean they perform pretty much the same I might say Chromium might be a little better but that's just my opinion so you guys can use whatever one you prefer So it's just unpacking it now for us. And it's done. So if we go to internet, we have Firefox now. See, Mozilla Firefox. And it works well. Yep, so this is Firefox. I'm not going to go into it or anything. So I'm just going to close these. So now let's go into some other apps. So, if you use Discord, like me, you might want a Discord app on your Pi. So, here is a web Discord app that you can install that is really helpful. And it, work, it performs pretty well. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go right here, download this file. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go continue. And then you're going to copy this command right here, Chrome Extensions. Uh, there we go copy open up a new tab just paste that in there and you'll open the chrome extensions up and what you want to do here you need to enable developer mode click on that there we go and you open up your files to downloads where you downloaded it to did it not download Mm. I don't know why. Let me download it one more time. Okay, that time it looks like it did download. Oh, I just saw I was l looking at the wrong one. So you go here and you download this Discord Chrome app.crx and you want to keep it. And there we go. Now it's downloaded. So we go over to extensions and you enable developer mode. Open up your file app to downloads where you have this file and you just drag and drop and you're going to go add app. Now we have Discord. So if I click on this, it will launch the Discord app for me. And here we have our Discord app. Okay, so I logged into the Discord app, and it to me, it, it's looking fully functional. I can slide through different stuff, and I can go to different apps, and they all do work. So you might be like, if I close this Discord app, where am I going to find it again? Because it's not here. Well, it's in Chromium Apps, and you get this Discord right here. And you can always open up Discord from there. So that's that and it's pretty useful I like that I like that discord app more than the web version so that's good and another thing commander pet pie made by jack 477 it's an easy app where you can edit overclock look at your bootloader and do all of this different stuff like that so you have to go to his github go to this drive link and it's in a zip file but that's fine so you're just gonna download it and it's really small, so it's already downloaded for me. What you're going to do, open up your file manager, go to downloads where you downloaded it, extract to, and you want to extract it to your home folder. It needs to be in home for this to work. So do it to your home, extract. So if I go to my home now, I, have, I do have Commander Pi, and that's what I want. So what you're going to do now, go in that folder, tools, open current folder and terminal. So that's what we need to do. And then we're, we're gonna just going to copy these two commands right here. Just copy this, paste. And then what we're going to do is run this install script. So 
So just copy that too. Go to the terminal, paste, enter. And this is going to start installing it for us. Oops. I hit enter too much. Do you want to install? Yes. So it's getting everything that we need for this to work. And it added a desktop shortcut for us now. So it should launch. Right here, Commander Pi Desktop. So open this and you want to execute in terminal. And it opens up for us. So we click OK for that. And look at this. So we have CPU details. It tells us all about our CPU, our bootloader, and what I'm running September 3 bootloader. It's the newest one, I think. Network, our Ethernet, and IP address. So if you don't know how to check that, you can use Command or Pi to always look that up. And overclock. So if you don't know how to overclock, this is a very easy way to do it. So it tells you some recommended values and maximum values. And you just cop type those in here, click Set, Apply and Reboot, and you'll be good. So that's an easy way you can overclock. And it's a cool app. And he's done an amazing job on this. So yeah and then some another app that's amazing which I've talked about a lot before is PyKiss. PyKiss is probably my favorite app for the Pi. You can install tons of cat apps and stuff. So just copy this command to install. Paste it and hit enter. Oh, I put the little sign right there. You don't want that sign. And now it's going to start installing PyCast for me. So it gets all the dependencies and then it clones into the PyCast. Gets all of the files that are needed. And yeah, now we're good. We got PyCast. So if we go over here, System Tools, we got PyCast. Here we are with PyKids. So we have some tweaks, games. He's added a lot of games and Half Life, which is a game that Leap Leap PSP video and ETA Prime made a video about. He's done an amazing job, and you can actually play this at 100 FPS on your Pi. So you can check that out. At info, we have these info apps. Emulation, we have all these emulators. There's Dolphin PP PSP. And you can run PSP games like that. So, and then we have internet, devs, others. So we have a lot of really useful apps here that are really good. And I totally recommend you guys taking a look at this app and just using it. Yeah. So then my last recommended app is Chromium Media Edition. So with this app... On the normal Chromium, you cannot watch Netflix, use Spotify, use Disney Plus, any of those apps. So with this app, you with this Chromium version, you can. So just copy the commands from his website, and now it's gonna install Widevine with Chromium for us. And here we go, we have it installed. So in internet, we have Chromium web browser, Firefox. And media edition so media edition only use it when you want to watch Netflix for other web browsing and stuff like that use chromium or Firefox but for Netflix use that yeah so this is about it for this video I hope this video was helpful for you guys of getting it up running from your Chrome OS and recommended apps and stuff so I hope you guys do try this out if you do I hope it works so thanks for watching this video please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe